Hi everyone again, this is Shilpa. We're excited to bring to you the, the cast and crew here from Miss India America. So let's give them a round of applause for being here. Thank you. Um, so sitting beside me, we have Ravi Kapoor, the director and the writer of Miss India America, alongside Mira, who also um, was played Geeta in the, in the film and is also one of the writers for the film. Tia, the leading actress who plays Lily Prasad. Kosha, who plays Seema, Lily's best friend in, in, the, in the film. We have Mega and Saurabh, who are the, the producers of the film. So let's give them a round of applause again. Just for <laughs> so we all watched the film today. I've watched it personally about three times, and I absolutely love it. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the inspiration behind the film and, and what you wanted to portray in it? It was, uh, you know, Mira had a solo show called Miss India America, which Mega had produced. And that was more of a, it was, a, it was based on your life originally. And, but one of the worlds that Mira had experienced was the beauty pageant world. Because Mira was a former Miss India California. Right. Yes. Oh, wow. Uh, it was the Indian beauty pageant. But I lost the Miss India USA, and uh, it was very traumatic. And so we, we had decided, to write a movie we about it. We had to write it. a movie so I could recover. Uh -huh. uh, not really. <laughs> <laughs> but we really wanted to explore the theme of winning and ambition, and particularly in the, in the South Asian community as well. And we thought a beauty pageant would be a perfect place to, to, to explore those themes. And you know, we were talking about this earlier um, before the film started. What a great timing to release this film. Um, Miss America, as you know, was um, of Indian descent in 2014. Um, just the Oscars that just came up, everyone was talking about diversity in the nominations. Um, how do you feel that this film is helping spread that awareness uh, of diversity? What's really great is that um, it's a predominantly female South Asian American cast. You know, we have also, you know, guys who play some really fun roles in the film. So we, we just, you know, it was time. It was timely in the sense that, you know, there was a story to tell. There are a lot of stories to tell about different worlds that are here in, in our society. So this was one of them. And, you know, it was great to have this team and you know, to be able to go into a, a South Asian American, you know, world and, and let that be sort of the backdrop right. to explore more universal themes. So, I mean, I, yeah. I still get excited when I see the film uh, festivals and I see all these brown women. I'm like, yeah, it's, like, <laughs> it's so unusual. Do you? Well. So I still <laughs> <laughs> Do you? Get excited. No, 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 no. <laughs> In a very heady, theoretical Of course, yeah. of course. <laughs> Um, so that kind of brings us to um, Lily's character, who Tia plays, who's this very strong, confident individual. And she has um, what you call in the movie a Lily plan. Um, tell us about that plan, and, and do you, you yourself uh, in your personal life have a Tia plan that you live by? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I definitely relate to Lily in some ways, as these guys could probably attest to. <laughs> Maybe not when I'm around. Um, <laughs> I, I have a bit of a type A personality, and so in that respect, I have I share sort of that that stri you know like that drive to be th that drive to excel and um, to try and achieve perfection and like things I try my hand at, which incidentally is why I don't play sports because I'm really bad at them and I like to be good at things. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I guess I have a little bit in common with Lily. I'd like to think that I'm a little more well-rounded uh, than Lily and maybe I have better interpersonal skills, I hope. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I mean, I, I and yeah, I think I'm, have always been pretty driven um, and maybe a little ambitious, and so uh, maybe I have a, have had a TIA plan, but I never made a scrapbook. Maybe <laughs> I wasn't so organized in, in enough to do something like that. But uh, yeah, I, I guess I do have a lot in common with Lily, <laughs> for better or for worse. Um, so Kosha, your character, um, Seema, is um, Lily's best friend in the film. You kind of take this selflessness role, which is quite opposite from Lily's role. Um, how, what was, you know, how did you feel playing that emotionally, that character, and, and do you as a person resonate with that personality? Um, I definitely resonated with that personally. Um, I, I don't know, I feel like it came very natural to me. I've always been someone who has a lot of female friendships in my life. I went to an all-girls school, so 
I know what it's like to sort of put others first and then do the opposite and put myself first. I think those fine lines of friendship are really interesting and exciting to me. And um, yeah. So uh, that's interesting. So I guess it, in terms of uh, that challenge in playing that role, what was the, the most difficult piece of, of playing Seema? You know what, I feel like this is maybe the first time I've ever been able to say this, but this role actually wasn't super challenging for me because it was very, ooh, sorry, <laughs> it was very close to myself. And that was such a privilege for me because usually, I think you can attest to this, I don't get to play characters that are similar to myself. So when I read this script and approached this character, I just embraced every part of me personally that I haven't been able to play in other characters. As the producers having you know a large cast to work with, what was your challenge in terms of making sure that everything was on schedule and, and, and on time in terms of filming? <laughs> I think we were always on schedule. I think for the most part we were always on schedule. Fortunately, uh, because this was an independent film through and through, uh, the cast and the crew were game. Uh, they they knew that this was going to be a labor of love for uh, for almost all parties involved, and because of that, uh, there are all kinds of things that you have to. Everyone kind of has to wear many different hats, but fortunately, everybody was was up for that, and that uh, that kept us kept us going and kept us on time and kept us on schedule. Yeah, and there's a lot of camaraderie, you know, with the with the cast, with the crew, with we had scenes where we had hundreds of extras, and I think it created a very familial uh, type of atmosphere, and I think everyone got along quite nicely, and we've been together now for, I mean, Mira Ravi and, and Sorb and I for years, but with the cast over three years. So we've continued to move with the film, which is nice. Meg is also super, super organized. Uh, so that should have been my short answer. That's the reason why we were able to <laughs> yeah. They're True. married, by the way, can you tell? <laughs> we have two married couples here. That's Mira and Ravi too. Well. Yeah. We live in the same house. Yeah. <laughs> no, we don't. But it was interesting with the scheduling and keeping things on track. I hadn't realized, really thought about how long it would take to for hair and makeup for that many women in some of the, the, the bigger mm. scenes as well. So it was always like, so when do we get the actors on set? <laughs> it was like another two hours. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And rightly so, but yeah. they had to look good. I know. If yeah. we had a few more men, I, <laughs> they, had, they had to look missing in character. India, America. Yeah. 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 I mean, that specifically for, beauty, for a beauty, for the, for the beauty for pageant, pageant scene, yeah. specifically. It was a lot of dress up. It was yeah. a lot of saris, a lot of uh, Indian Dance wear. Dance costumes. Yeah, and uh, yeah, poor Tia, yeah, I had to put you in twice. <laughs> I liked it. I thought, I, I love that like stuff. this whole, like, uh, Indian dance costume, which has like all this like head jewelry. I mean, some of you probably know it and bangles, and they're like six different pieces of clothing There's that has to be attached material. in a particular way. And it's all dance tucked bells. away in places. Yeah. yeah. So and Mega did it. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> um, and speaking about some of the traditional wardrobe and pieces. I think the, the story took a very interesting um, perspective because there's a lot of progressive scenes. You had the traditional Bark Natyam dancer who's wearing the traditional garb they described um, dating an, a non-ethnic character. And then you had um, Geeta's character, who, play, who was played by Mira, um, who was this mom, but she wasn't the traditional mom that you saw cooking in any scene. She was the mom that was a poet and successful. Um, so what you know, what inspired you or what kind of triggered some of those scenes and were they based on a true story? It, in terms of the dancing, um, I studied Indian classical dance, Bharatanatyam, along with Mega. Um, and what inspired, I think, those scenes, and, and, and Ravi and I wrote this together, so it's kind of these two voices coming together in that, you know, I, I never, I was into my dancing, but not really, and I think I just kind of strayed away from it and had this whole other life in a different way I wanted to express myself. And Ravi, you know, would write these plays too that, you know, he wrote a play based on the Ramayana. So that scene was kind of bringing our lives together to sort of, you know, kind of um, really delve into this, well, why is, you know, this character Sita sitting there? And it is something Lily would say, you know, and it yeah. is something we've talked about and explored and and in terms of the the father and the mother and the mother being a poet and the father mm -hmm. being a, a brain surgeon everything when we were writing the script was about it was about the, the character of Lily so how did those how do these other characters reflect on her and how did they define that character of Lily 
And so with the mother, it was like, so let's create this character which she really butts up against. And it, the opposite of Lily is a poet in some ways because she is so heady. Yeah. Whereas the mother is more heart driven and, and emotional. And then the father, of course, was, uh, was somebody that she looked up to and, and related to. So all the other characters kind of came, yeah. came in in relief to the character of Lily. And um, there was a very interesting um, dynamic that Lily's character had because in the movie, when you first started, um, you wanted to kind of, you didn't relate to this character. You wanted to almost not cheer for her. And then Teresa. You wanted to punch her in the nose. You, yeah, you did. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no. My job here was done. <laughs> um, but then towards the end, you started to cheer for this character and you wanted to love her and you wanted her to win um, and be number one. Um, and so. You know, how did that feel for you guys in that journey of really building her character and, and Lily or Tia playing that character? Like, how did you feel? What were the challenges you felt to kind of express those that sentiment? Well, I I um, I felt even though I wasn't Lily exactly growing up, I'm sure my parents would have loved me to be a little more like Lily as far as school was concerned. Um, but. Even though I wasn't her, I felt like, I, from the moment I first read the script, um, not only did I think the script was just f so well written and so funny, but also something, I, I connected immediately with this character. And even though I wasn't her, I felt like I knew her intimately well. And I sort of recognized parts of me in her. Um, I have an older sister who is like typical firstborn child, model student, model kid. Um, so I, I recognized parts of my sister in her. So I just I felt like I knew this person really, really well and um, felt like I, I really had to portray her. If the, mm -hmm. I read it sort of in a very early stage before it was actually getting made into a movie. And I, at that point, I was like, if this thing ever gets made into a movie, I'm going to fight tooth and nail to get this job. <laughs> Luckily, they didn't make me do that. Thank you. <laughs> but um, <coughs> oh, uh, sorry, I, I digress. But I. I um, I just felt like I knew her and I had to play her and I felt, I, I almost saw her as a sympathetic character. And so none of those things even occurred to me for some reason until after the fact, and I know I've told, said this story before, but um, I think maybe at our wrap party or some, right after we wrapped production, um, one of the PAs who had read the script early on said, well, I never told you this until now, but I read the script and I really hated Lily Prasad and I was really nervous that we were gonna make a movie where the protagonist is like this super unlikable character. And now that we're done, I'm really glad that I, I don't I don't hate her. Like I, I, I like her at the end, which is, I mean, yeah. hopefully that's the case. Um, but it was sort of a lug, it, it, that was the first time it ever occurred to me that someone would look at her and, and dislike her. I just felt like I understood her strengths and her weaknesses. And so I had the sort of luxury of not realizing that until after we were done. I just sort of played played her as truthfully as I could oh, and wow, okay. whatever happened, happened, I guess. Oh, well done. No, oh, thanks. Yeah. No, I, I, really, I wanted to hug you and I felt bad that you won third place, I think, at the end. Or is it second or third place? Uh, I was what the, yeah. second, second round, round. which is third yeah. place. Oh, yes. got it. Oh, but she was happy. That. But it was okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She'd uh, learned not to win all the time, and it yeah. was okay. And, it was okay. Um, and so I guess, like, talking about, before we open it up to the, the, the audience, um, let's talk about the cast a little bit. I know that um, we don't have Hannah Simone, who stars in The New Girl here today, who also plays um, Sonia Nielsen, one of the contestants for Miss India America. Um, and you have two leading um, females here. How was the casting process for you guys? Um, and was it difficult to find um, Indian American actors for the film? You know, uh, t talking about the, the lead, act, uh, lead character of uh, Lily, we knew we needed to find somebody that could take the audience on a journey on, on this supposedly un un unsympathetic character that did appear unsympathetic on the page, but would still make us invested in her journey. And we kept saying, we need to find our Indian Reese Witherspoon. <laughs> and uh, I, I think kind of got it. I think, oh. uh, you know, Tia did an, an amazing job on the yeah. film. Yeah. And, yeah, well, Rover, you know, as we like to say, you know, Reese Witherspoon is the white uh, Tia Sarkar. <laughs> <laughs> That's what everyone's saying on the street, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and it's like, we, so we knew a lot of the actors. Like Tia, Mira had played her mom twice before on TV shows, and I actually played her dad on one of those shows, oh, wow. too. Yeah. So we knew Tia, and we already like, yeah, she could be brilliant. 
And then, like kosher, I saw in a short film, and was like, and we got kosher in for the reading, and so there were a lot of people who we knew, and there were some people who we didn't know, and we were surprised by the depth of talent in the South Asian community. Now it's pretty phenomenal. Yeah, I it think is. We were and saying. it was great to have you know just a wealth of talent come in and audition, and and to see that they're mm -hmm. just really good, you know, really yeah. good. And you know, you've said this a lot too. We're like, you know, maybe five, ten years ago there weren't as many, mm -hmm. you know? It might have been hard to cast this film. Might have been yeah. hard. Do you think it would have been the same if it was had a, more of a, a male predominant character kind of platform, or you think it would just have been, it just the same wealth and depth of talent out there would be the same for male versus a female? Um, I think it's pretty, I mean, what do yeah. you guys think? I think it's pretty, you know, even in I terms think so. of, because I went from a very female heavy movie to the next film I made, which is very male heavy, and again, South Asian. Um, there's a lot of talent. I mean, we're so lucky that we get to try out eight to 10, sometimes 12 people for a role, which is really exciting. Um, so we're gonna open the floor up to questions. Um, if you guys feel, go up to the mic and, and please ask a question to the talent. Hi, uh, I wanted to thank you guys for making a movie that was, you know, you don't, a lot of times when you see Indians represented on screen, it's Indian Indians or immigrant Indians and like the story of those of us who grew up here doesn't really get told. But on top of that, I liked that it was a very specific story. Like it wasn't about trying to get everything about being an Indian American out there. And I wonder like, cause I've talked to a few writers in, in various other communities. Like did you, did you two as writers feel kind of like you had to fight that urge to be like, well I have to get, every, I have to get everything about being an Indian American down on this page right now because otherwise this will be the one movie where that, <laughs> where that happens. <laughs> You know, I no, I don't. We didn't have to uh, fight that urge to talk about you know being an Indian American. We we um, we knew the sort of story that we wanted to tell and what we wanted to explore. And if anything, it was just using. We happen to be Indian American. It happens, you know, the beauty pageant world is a backdrop, Orange County, but the world that we live in, you know, is very, you know human and connected mm -hmm. in that way. And I think those themes of being an Indian American have been explored in films earlier on, mm -hmm. like um, American, American Daisy, Daisy and ABCD. Yeah. And you know, they, they've explored those themes and maybe as a, as a group now, our voices to, um, our stories are different, you know, and what we want to talk about is different. Mm -hmm. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for sharing that. Anybody else from the audience? <laughs> oh, we have the distributor going on. <laughs> Just an innocent person. So you guys were talking about, uh, you both had the background in the uh, traditional dances, but you both had to, as actresses, portray a certain expertise on screen, especially you, Kosha, who had to say, I've been doing this, I know this, and now I have to coach someone who doesn't know. How much had you guys worked on that before or had it in your lives before you even got to the movie? I actually... And maybe the only one here that didn't have a dance background, so which was like excellent because my character is not supposed to be amazing at it. <laughs> so that goes back to what I was saying earlier. I got to like really embrace everything about myself. Um, so I learned the choreography, which was exciting to me because I don't have a dance background, and I didn't have to make it look perfect the way someone would like Lily would move. Very cool. I thought every Indian girl just knew how to dance. Yeah. Man, I wish. I like to figure out how to dance. But yeah, I know how to like bust a move. Yeah, yeah. But, but not the traditional type. Not the traditional type. Yeah, I'm with you on that. I, I relate. Okay. You can do a little bhangra, though. I could right. do a little bhangra. Yeah, Punjabi MC taught me that. Yeah. Are you Punjabi? No, I'm oh. Gujarati. Oh, I was gonna say Punjabi. I mean, Punjabi is just—it's like in your DNA. You have to know how to. Do it. It's skip my generation. <laughs> <laughs> it's part of your resume when you're born. My question has already been answered a little bit because I was initially wondering about the existence of Miss India and the idea of cultural beauty pageants within the U.S. And so I'd like to expand it. I so you were Miss India. Um, or Miss, Miss India, India California. Miss India California years ago, and I'm I'm sort of intrigued what the what the weight of that in in relation to the traditional culture and the American culture and how that played out for you. I'm I'm just intrigued. Can you mm -hmm. tell me more? Mm -hmm. uh, right. Um, yes, I would. I will. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I can. I can. <laughs> That's the word. Um, you know, I think you know. I don't know what it's like when I when I did it. Um, 
there was a group of girls who would go and we'd do these beauty pageants. Um, it was uh, for different reasons. I think it was a cultural thing. I think, you know, when we were younger, we wanted to be seen. Um, that was there, you know, and um, maybe we wanted a crown and, you know, get our face in the paper. And it was that kind of thing. And um, there were very, uh, and it was also like, I think, a, a dance, you know, a place where you can showcase a talent, too. So it was all these different things. And I think, you know, for me, looking back on it, it was, um, it was just one of those things I did that I would go, OK, that was part of my experience of growing up. And I was able to, you know, bring it into this you know, story that we told. It's interesting now, when you look at the girls that do the beauty pageants now, they're, they're really accomplished. They're, this is just one aspect of their lives. They're gonna be doctors, they're mm -hmm. gonna be lawyers, they're gonna be nurses, they're gonna be engineers. But they also have this, this pull towards doing these pageants as well. And I think it's a little bit to do with the Bollywood thing too, that because Bollywood entertainment is still, still kind of gets into their homes and into their lives. They want to kind of touch that a little bit as well, and there's a value to that too. Yeah. And I think it's also the expectation of, of uh, Indian women in this country as well to be everything as mm -hmm. well. They have to be. They're expected to be intelligent and smart, and they're expected to be entertainers and and uh, and to and to be, show off their their talents too. No, Confident, sure. yet humble. Yeah. 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 Things. And yeah. you must play at least one <laughs> instrument. And yeah. sing and dance. And dance and go to Stanford. Preferably at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> and then go to Stanford and get your um, electrical engineering degree. You yeah. know. So, uh, I think that was yeah. also a big part of it, too. Yeah. That. And in some ways, even the title, Miss India America, it's, it's, a, it's a wider idea of, of the title of what does it mean to be Miss India America? What's, what is the expectation that that's put on by other people and on themselves, too? And, and that's actually interesting because that was a question that was submitted was, you know, in today's Miss India America, what should she look like? What, how would you describe her today? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, mean, I think, you know, for, for any kind of culturally specific uh, beauty pageant or, or, or similar kinds of events, um, you know, whenever you have particularly immigrant communities uh, in the U.S., ideas of standards of beauty, uh, those are uh, ideas that sometimes get challenged a little bit and I think with these events uh, for all that we can make fun of them for which I think you know our, our film does uh, there also is though a real sense of celebration you know a celebration of of this particular culture and this particular look and and uh, putting value uh, in that and within the context of American society as well and I don't think there's one look yeah. that there isn't one ideal mm -hmm. you know I mean we're looking in the broader sense. Our title of Miss India America isn't isn't just a beauty pageant, you know, title. Yeah. It's you know thematically much broader, and you know it's so interesting to see our you know young girls you know growing up, and you want them to be able to feel comfortable in their bodies and whatever they have and whatever they want to do. So, I just don't think there's one definition of what that Miss India America is. Yeah. It's just it's who you are, you know, and, and do you even, you know. Yeah, no, yeah, I totally, um, as a person, uh, as an individual, I totally relate, relate to that. And I think that you drew it into the film pretty well when um, Seema, who's played by Kosha, uh, was told by the judge that she should not be in the pageant because she wasn't contestant-like or she wasn't as tall as, you know, the character who's played by Tia. Um, how did that make you, make you feel in, in that moment when you were told maybe you weren't fair and lovely like we're, we're brought up to believe um, and that you couldn't be part of it? Not great. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, think it's, uh, I think it brought up like a very interesting and important point about what all young Indian girls go through. And um, I also think it was interesting because I don't know if you feel like this as an actor, but in Hollywood, um, everyone has this idea, like these Indian characters are written and everyone has this idea as to what they are, but none of us fit into that square box. So uh, I think it mirrored something that we all experience and it was really great to explore that in the film and not have to fit into that box that sometimes when we're doing other jobs we have to. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's a really great way to put it. Um, I know I always wish that I was 5'7", so I could be part of it. Mm -hmm. But you know, that's never going to happen in my life. So. <laughs> but you're doing all right. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
So any questions on the floor? Do we have any? OK. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> Um, this is for the actors. Do you feel like in the last few years, like in the wake of Oscars so white and all of this stuff in terms of diversity in Hollywood, do you feel like the roles have changed for you guys? Do you feel like there are more opportunities out there and different roles and better roles? I would say absolutely. Thank you for your question. You're welcome. Um, I would say, I mean, you guys are, there's a bunch of actors up here. Um, I, even in the short amount of time I've been acting professionally in Hollywood, I have seen a marked change um, in the kinds of roles uh, that that networks and studios will even consider South Asian actors for. And um, I mean, I, I still, I definitely think we have a long way to go. And uh, but I, I, I see a tangible change and 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 difference. And from from when I first started working in this industry. Um, you know, it, it, a, a, a role on a television show might say, you know, the casting notice might say, like, ethnically ambiguous or, or open to all ethnicities. But really, they would mean probably African American. And then maybe if they're feeling a little, you know, gutsy, they'll, they'll go l l Latina. And then if they're really trying to, like, push the, push the limits, they'll go Asian American. But South Asian American was still so, so, um, so crazy of an idea that it was hard. I, I, I think, I mean, I was up for, I mean, you guys probably had the same experience. I was up for roles where I would be testing for a pilot and the network would say, we love Tia and she was really great, but we're gonna choose this Latina, I mean, this happened once in particular. We're gonna pick this Latina actress because this particular network, 40% of their viewership was Latina. And I was like, oh, but maybe just pick the person that was the best at the job. So, you know, I've had, t t you know, countless experiences like that one. And now I feel like only in the last couple years there have been such changes in like who we see in mainstream media and um, it you know with your Mindy Kalings and your Aziz Ansaris and um, Priyanka Chopra's even you know um, it's 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 exciting that I feel like we're right on the brink of really uh, becoming so. Um, so so integrated in mainstream media that it, hopefully soon we won't even need to like comment about it. I mean, I know that might be a little ways off, but I, I see changes happening and it's very exciting. And Miss uh, India America is going to be the reason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We hope so. We're rooting for you guys. Thank you. Um, so as writers and kind of understanding the, the, the challenge that actors have in, in getting some of these type of roles, do you feel added pressure to write scripts that are catered towards a more diverse or niche community? I mean, I, th I think we just want to tell stories which do touch on the South Asian American experience. I think we're passionate about doing those stories. You know, it's not an easy road as well, because it, it, we're still trying to, we're trying to figure out, is there a marketplace for them as well? And mm -hmm. how, how, um, how much do we need to integrate the, the white American experience within those stories of the, the, the South Asian American experience? We're still discovering it, but I know from my perspective, I want to keep telling these stories about these brown people, you know, because we talk a lot about if we don't write the stories, then nobody else is going to do them, and there won't be a narrative, a historical narrative in some ways that you can point to and, and go, so what was it like to be a South Asian American in 2015 or whatever? And you go, oh, well, there's this movie and this movie and that movie. Go check them out, and you'll get a sense of it. And yeah. if we don't do them, then they just won't be there. Yeah, and there was, you know, there's a lot of really interesting filmmakers who are telling these stories. And as a writer, I think it's not challenging to write a, a fully formed, you know, three-dimensional person who is like, you know, happens to be South Asian. So it's really great that there's a um, complexity too, and there's something, there's a depth, and there's a history, and, and the way they relate to each other too, and just women relating to each other. We relate mm -hmm. to each other in so many different ways, and. And I think, you know, we both wanted, we weren't like, we didn't have an agenda, I don't think, in writing this. It was more just, let's tell this story, and, and through telling this story, these, these things happened, you know, where women are talking about their friendships, or they're talking about, you know, this idea of being driven and how far they're going to go. And their relationships and their and the, first love. Yeah, and they're, you know, so a lot of different things. And, and so that's really exciting. Yeah, and I uh, I think that just as a uh, speaking as a producer, you know, even when I was just reading the script that that Mira and Ravi wrote, 
um, there was a, a universality to uh, the, the situations, to the struggles that the characters are going through. And I think that uh, a good way of maybe looking at it is just it's having a real respect for uh, an audience, any kind of audience, doesn't even have to be uh, specifically South Asian, but it's just telling really, really good stories and it happens to be this particular South Asian experience, but within that you know, supposedly narrow experience, you can find the universe you know, within that. That's interesting. Um, so we're, I guess we could just go down the line. So what's next for um, each one of you guys? I guess something that you're working on in the next, you know, in the near future, or where can we see you next? Uh, so uh, for myself, uh, so uh, Megan and I are developing, you know, a, a handful of projects. Um, uh, I'm not sure uh, how how much we can really say. Well, there, there's one. It's it's a children's entertainment brand called Super Duper Princess Heroes. Uh, it is uh, a uh, it's it's geared towards a young, very young audience, but tries to teach values of female empowerment uh, in a very fun uh, sort of. Uh, uh, pulpy uh, superhero slash princessy atmosphere. Um, and uh, yeah, we have a couple other film projects that we're developing as well. And yeah, you can talk about your, your next one. Yeah, um, I, I shot right after Miss India America, I shot The Tiger Hunter. So that's coming out in the next few weeks. It's starting its festival circuit. And, um, and then the super duper princess heroes. And I am continuing to try and create as much comedy as I can, and I'm working on a show that will be on MTV. I would love to tell you the title, but it keeps switching to untitled. <laughs> but uh, it's about weed dealers. <laughs> <laughs> um, I uh, just uh, wrapped production on a pilot for NBC uh, um, that Amy Poehler um, executive produced and directed, which is really exciting. Um, and then I voice a character on a couple different animated shows. One is Star Wars Rebels, which um, our season two finale uh, event is tomorrow night. It airs on Disney XD. And then um, I just started working on another one. It's a project for, for DreamWorks for Netflix. Why can't I talk? And I. <laughs> can't talk about it yet, <laughs> specifically because I've been told not to, but I hopefully will get to soon. <laughs> um, Ravi and I uh, have written a uh, half hour single camera comedy uh, called In Transit about, um, it's set in the 70s and it's based oh, nice. on my childhood growing up in San Diego. Oh wow. So. I have a lot of uh, inspiration from within your own childhood that, yeah. that is portrayed in your writing. It's great. And I just act like a vampire and Take her stories and create. And so, just before we go into this rapid fire round, we've prepared for you guys. It'll be really quick. Um, it's not scary. You'll you'll eat it. Sounds scary. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, when can um, the folks that didn't get to watch the the film today? Where can they see it? Um, mm -hmm. And where can they find it? So we're pretty much on every major digital streaming platform starting April 5th, uh, including Google Play. Uh, but uh, just if you just look for Miss India America, uh, you are almost guaranteed to find it on uh, any of your on-demand or streaming channels. Yeah, and for those of you in Mountain View, uh, as I said before, we're still playing in San Jose, so definitely tell your Bay Area friends to check us out. All right, um, so what we're going to do really quickly is it's going to take a few minutes. Um, we're going to do a rapid fire round. I'm going to ask you a question. We'll just go down the line and just say the first thing that comes to mind when, when I say this. Um, and uh, OK, Ravi is saying we start with you, Sora. All right, let's um, do it. So it. Hat is I know you hand. could if you want. <laughs> um, OK, so your favorite search engine, Google or Bing? Google. <laughs> Google. Google. <laughs> Google, but I don't. Do people use Bing? <laughs> <laughs> I heard they pay you to use it. Oh, oh well really? then, <laughs> guys, <laughs> Google for sure. <laughs> Google, I Google it. I've never even done Bing. Oh, yeah. awesome. We, we pay them all to say that. <laughs> Great. Um, so if you had to pick your favorite movie between these two, which one would it be? The internship or the intern? The internship, of course. <laughs> <laughs> nice question. I'm going to have to say the internship. The intern. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> the internship, of course. <laughs> Thanks, guys. The internship. The internship. <laughs> and I haven't seen the intern, so the internship as well. Oh, by default. <laughs> yeah, is that okay? <laughs> you pick I, I, I haven't used okay. Bing either, so all my answers are going to be by default. Okay. <laughs> well, I, I really enjoyed the internship. Thank yes. you. Pageant, Miss Universe or Miss World? 
Ooh, Miss World is underground. <laughs> <laughs> I actually do like Miss World better. Miss Universe? Which one doesn't have the swimsuit competition? That one. Okay. Does one of them not have it? I think so. This is a one-word answer. Sorry, I knew I was going to be terrible at this okay, game. Yeah. Do we know? Are we sure now we know who Miss Universe is? Oh, right, right. <laughs> um, gosh, um, Miss World, Miss Universe, Miss... Anything. Miss any, Miss everything. <laughs> Donald Trump does the Miss Universe, right? Okay, then yeah. Miss World. Miss World. World. <laughs> World. Really I don't know if that affects your decision. <laughs> You know, miss everything. <laughs> All everything. Mrs. Kapoor. Sure, yeah, why not? Yeah, I'll go, go with that. Okay. Uh, miss India, America. Yeah, yeah there we go. <laughs> you know, that was off the charts, but I like it. Okay, well, you're a writer, sorry. so you can write in what you want to say. <laughs> <laughs> Facebook or Snapchat? Facebook. I'm too old for Snapchat. <laughs> <laughs> I, can't, I can't do Snapchat. I've got a Facebook. Facebook. <laughs> Ooh, Are you sure about that? Oh. I don't know. I'm getting into Snapchat. She's our youngster. Uh, <laughs> I'll go with uh, Facebook. I'm going to have to go Facebook, but I did my first Snapchat on a red carpet last night, and it was thrilling and terrifying at the same time. <laughs> so maybe Snapchat soon. I, oh, that sounds exciting. I, um, yes, Facebook. I don't even know what to do. Yeah, same. I can uh, barely cope with any of them. But, <laughs> and I've, and I've, again, by default, I've never done Snapchat, so Facebook. Okay, so I was gonna ask you guys Facebook or Instagram, but it's seems... Instagram. Yeah. Instagram. Instagram. Oh, okay. Oh, that was an obvious one. Okay, it was the Facebook thing. It's good. Good to know. Bollywood or Hollywood? Oh man, uh, Hollywood. I got. I got. I got to go Hollywood over Bollywood. But but I I will say um, uh, South Asian American independent film over both. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Diplomatic answer. <laughs> I think I would go for like 70s Bollywood and and then, yeah, independent Very films. Very specific. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. if we're going to give it to the errors, then that's different. <laughs> I'm going to go with Hollywood. As am I. Hollywood. Hollywood, Bollywood crossover? Your answers okay. are not answers. <laughs> They're not answers? Am I cheating? Yeah. Okay, Hollywood. I'm not committing, am I? You're I not, can't commit. I can't, I'm non-committal. <laughs> it's all gray. <laughs> And I've never seen a Bollywood movie, so no, I'm Get joking. Out. I have, okay, um, I mean, but Hollywood. Impressive, because there's Hollywood. like millions of Bollywood. Films. I just saw, so I just saw uh, Kapoor and Sons the other the other day. Oh, were you in there? Good things about yeah. that. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, Kapoor and Sons. Were you it wasn't person? about me though. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was well, about me, they, but right? it wasn't. It's like, it should be about you. Yeah, I was like, what? But it's still. Where am I in this film? What's that? <laughs> where am I in this film? Yeah. You. <laughs> where are my sons? So the next thing, and please say one word. Okay. okay so so if you were, um, <laughs> if, if I were host of a pageant and um, I asked you a question as a, as a pageant contestant, what would you incorporate in your answer? Child poverty or world peace? Oh. World peace. Child poverty. Oh, Seema, Kosha. <laughs> Child poverty. <laughs> world peace. World peace. World peace. Oh, nice. Um, we saw a lot of child poverty in the movies, so I'm surprised. Yeah, but if you have well, world peace, you have maybe world peace, you'll have you, you child yeah, that poverty. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Okay? Can like, I say that? Umbrella. No, that's, I was thinking, is, is that okay? <laughs> I was thinking, okay. <laughs> we all thought, like, if you have world peace, then. Because a lot of child poverty is due to. Well, or or but if you fix yeah. poverty, maybe you might have world peace. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> this is like a hungry chicken in a <laughs> The next film could be all about this. Yeah, we could. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so, final four team, who do you want to win for March Madness? Oh, God. Who's in the final uh, four? I, I, uh, they're not in it anymore, but UCLA. You can't, you can't put these answers. <laughs> so, the choices are Villanova, Oklahoma, North Carolina, or Syracuse. Oh, oh okay. I'm going to say Villanova. I'm going to say North Carolina. Pass. <laughs> <laughs> I know nothing about basketball. It's basketball. Yes. Right? yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to pass. Uh, um, this is a, not a very nice answer, but I'm from Texas, so anybody but Oklahoma. <laughs> okay, we'll take that. I'm going to say Syracuse because I know people from Syracuse. But I know nothing about. We got some what's big basketball on. fans on this. Field. <laughs> yeah, you know the next talent from Miss India America is going to be playing basketball. Basketball. Yeah. I was like, we're yes. really living a fusion up. of basketball, <laughs> fusion, and Bollywood, dancing, Barthnatium mm -hmm. basketball thing. Yeah, I'd love to see that. Tia Kosha, can you uh, put something like that together? For sure. Yeah. Yeah. I can handle the part, not the in part, not the basketball part. <laughs> uh, Syracuse, just because the the orange uniforms yeah. look very. Pretty. I'm with Syracuse, so I, I'm. Oh, I, 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 I 
picked good ones. Team writers. <laughs> um, so the last question for you guys, are you in it to win it, yes or no? Yes, always. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes. All day, baby. <laughs> Why not? Yes. Yes. I guess I committed. Yes. Yes. Um, I'm in it to be in it. <laughs> Sorry. Yes, I am. So just <laughs> it. Okay. I'm definitely in it for win it. Um, thank you guys so much for joining us here today at thank Google. You. Thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.